Welcome into the Tour Coach, everybody. Once again, I'm your host, Tony Ruggiero, here on the Tour Coach Podcast. Big few weeks coming up. I'm going to be headed this week to live event in Spain, in Andalusia, Spain. Looking forward to that. And then up to the Open Championship in Scotland. And as we've been doing all through the summer, spring and summer, leading up to and through each major, we're running a contest here on the Tour Coach as well as on our Dew Sweeper TV uh, on our YouTube page with the pro work episodes that are out. We're going to give away a set of Shrix on irons. We're going to draw the Monday after the British Open, the Open Championship for everybody. Uh, we're going to give away a set of Shrix on irons to one lucky winner. We're going to give away a Wingman Mini from Bushnell. And we're going to give away a little Dew Sweeper Vineyard Vines prize pack. All you have to do to register for this drawing is go to Dew Sweeper TV on YouTube. That's Dew Sweeper TV on YouTube, where you can watch some of our podcasts in video and some live action. But on any of those, all you got to do is like, subscribe and comment on any video, hashtag pro work, hashtag do sweeper TV or hashtag tour coach. So make sure you check us out on do sweeper TV on YouTube. Great contest uh, going on through the open championship. And we've got so much good stuff going on here on the, on the podcast and with all the content we're coming out. If you're listening, you probably know these are the people and the stories and the folks that I work with meet with run across teach in my daily day-to-day travels from whether it's in mobile at my studio to down at old palm in uh, palm beach gardens or maybe even hanging out at joey d's gym a little with colby Touye and aaron mcconley or up at bluebell in philly or a live event or a tour event or wherever it is we may travel teaching the game of golf we're going to be bringing it to you here on the tour coach it's insight designed to help you teach grow and play the game better hopefully you'll enjoy this and once again before i get out of here and let you listen to one of our discussions none of this would be possible without my boy mitch mcconnell mcconnell automotive buick gmc bushnell golf shrikson cleveland golf and of course the folks back home stokely's midtown garden center you can't forget blaine or taylor martino and rao and our boy ed rao but thanks for all the support through all the years keep listening here to the tour coach Go to Do Sweeper TV on YouTube. I think you're going to like what you see and a good chance to win some irons and some other cool gifts from Bushnell and Vineyard Vines through the end of the Open. All right, so here we are, segment four. We're wrapping up this this series, which to me, guys, uh, joined by a good friend, one of the great teachers in the game, Wayne Flint. Uh, you're always in my top 100 there, Wayno. Jackson Court, um, this series has come from some of the research our good friend Ralph Carroll over in Sandestin did, who produced my radio show for 15, 16, 17 years when it was on PGA Tour Radio, the Dew Sweepers Golf Show. A lot of you remember those days. Um, and this is the, it, Hank and Dunno, what I think is a wonderful series. And, guys, I hope you'll join me. I'd like to do two or three more of these series throughout the year because I've had such a good time going back through them. And I also think it's cool to remind people – of Hank's brilliance and the impact that he had on myself and Wayne. And I think indirectly on you, Jackson. Um, but this, this, this is the last one of this series. And it's uh, we, we, it was how he simplified the golf swing. He started with a steady post uh, where he talks about how the spine is like a post that uh, runs from your ne- head, your head steady runs down your neck, down your spine, out your rear end into the ground uh, we talked about rotation, then connection, and then we get to hear the last one. And if you take a lesson from Wayne Flynn or myself, and I would say Jackson as well, you're going to hear a lot of this verbiage and a lot of this in our first lesson as we explain the things that we think we would prefer happen. And the last part is educated hands, saving the power for impact. Uh, and it's what he thought with impact. And, you know, he, and he talks about lag, right, which is a little bit of a uh, – you know, I think in golf instruction nowadays, people don't like to say the word. I'm going to go on record here of saying that I, I love teaching lag, right? I don't teach people to handle drag, but I like that club head to lag. And I'm going to throw out, we've talked about Tom Ness. My favorite golf instruction quote of all time is you can never have too much money, too big a dick, or too much lag. <laughs> right? And I stand by that. Wayno, I'm going to turn it over to you after that. Well, thanks a lot, Pete. 
Um, <laughs> so I'm 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 proud that we went there. <laughs> no, you're not. And, <laughs> but I'm glad to take it over here. And uh, <laughs> so I I do think that sustaining club head lag as long as possible correctly is the secret of golf. And and I think correctly is a big word. Um, and and I don't think I don't think you can sustain club head lag correctly as long as possible if you don't have a steady post, uh, a continuous and full pivot motion or rotation back and through um, with connection of the arms to the pivot. I don't think the hands can can hold and sustain the lag and leave the lag in the club. Hank told me one time that you can't hold the lag in the club because the club's going so fast. It's gaining so much momentum that you can't hold that force back. Mm -hmm. You have to lead the force back, which, you know, once you get to the top of your backswing and you've, 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 you've bent your, your rear, your trail arm and you've flattened your, your lead wrist and, you know, you feel the weight of the club sitting on the trigger finger of your right hand for a, a right-handed golfer. You sense the weight of the club there. You have to be able to be patient enough as a player to leave the weight of the club, drag against that that trigger finger, and you have to continue to turn your body with great connection of your arms to to your pivot, and you've got to deliver that to the ball with educated hands, which, which really means quiet hands that, that allow the, the allow the lead wrist to, to be flat and to square the club face up at impact. And, you know, that's, that's a, that's a lifetime of, of learning and, um, and getting better that we all do that we all chase for the rest of our lives when we play golf. And that's, that's why the people who played a long time, they get better and better and better because they chase that, that excellence or the education in their hands, which delivers the club face square with lag left in it until after the ball has separated from the face of the club. So that's a, you know, that's a, that's a big deal, but that's something that all golfers, beginners, you know, all the way to, to great players should be striving to get better at every day. Yeah, no doubt. I love Jackson, your takeaways. Yeah, I liked a couple of his quotes. You know, I'm going to, what he had said, but he had said, um, lag is hard, but important and worth pursuing. (laughs) Right? Beautiful. There you go. He also said, it feels like the club is going slower, but in fact, it's not. And I like to, we tied it in with that towel drill that he would use on the ground. Yeah. That's a great drill. Yeah. You know, Tony, I had a guy out the other day and he was, I could, I just couldn't get him to quit flicking the club head out there at the ball. And, and I took him back in, in our, our men's locker room, <laughs> which is kind of sort of a storage room at this point, <laughs> but, but I took him back there. Because you know what I knew there was. I mean, you're building an island up here. <laughs> well, now come on now. <laughs> but I, I knew there was a mop bucket back there, and and there just so happened to be a wet mop, and I put it on the, I put it on the floor, of of the shower area, and I and I got that guy to drag that wet mop, and I said, now try to flick that thing through. That's old and, school. And he could, and he couldn't flick it through because it was so heavy. Mm-hmm. Right. He had to he had to drag that mop, in a straight line. And he had to drag it in a straight line by rotating his body. He couldn't do it with his hands and wrists because the mop was too heavy. And then I took him, and then I took him from there, back out, you know, into the golf shop. And I've got one of the, one of the clubs that I built and taped a, uh, a, uh, a paintbrush to, one of Tom Ness's drills. Yeah. And then I, I, I taught him to lay that paintbrush on the ground and try to straight, try to try to paint a straight line with that paintbrush on the carpet. And and he had he couldn't do that with his hands because he'd have 
flick the paint all over the place. It didn't have paint on it, but we were imagining that. And and he he learned to lay that paintbrush down, and he learned to drag a, drag that paintbrush in a straight line, and and that's that was teaching him to be patient with his hands and educate his hands to not release the club sideways and and flick the face around the corner and hit pull hooks with the face or hit fat shots by bottoming it out too soon or whatever the case may be. So, you know, those, those small things like that, you know, get a wet towel and hang it over your, your club and lay it on your front yard and drag it along the grass. That'll teach you what the sensation of lag is and how to move that club with your body and not just with your hands and wrists. So, you know, those things were, were brilliant things that I learned from, from Tom Ness and from Hank and, you know, and, and, and all those guys that I was fortunate enough to hang around with. So, you know, and, and again, those things haven't, and, and they haven't gone out of style. You know, they, they've got kind of got beat up a little bit because everybody says that when you have lag, you're handle dragging, but if you're doing it correctly, you're really not handle dragging. You're just turning your body and the club's staying in front of your body and, and the, and the club's getting delivered with a good stable club face and, and a little bit of club head lag. Well, I think I taught a girl today who I, I teach the family and um, she had said some folks to talk to her about lag in the club. Right. And it messed her up. But when we talked about pivot and we explained what created the lag, that lag is something that's created and it's the effect. I mean, it's not the cause that you, you create it with the pivot and with the motion. She got to hitting it well, right? Like where, and I think right. that's where people in Jackson, you, you, you teach a lot of folks as well. Like you get off is when fo- people just tried to create the lag or that impact position without the other pieces that create it. That's where you get off track to me. That's right. That's right. I, th- I for sure think lag's an effect of a whole lot of things. Right being done correctly and and you know everybody at the top of their backswing pretty much everybody i'm not going to say 100 percent, but pretty much everybody at the top of their backswing when they've they've bent their trail arm and they've hinged their wrist they they've lag. got some some sense of club head lag mm-hmm. now they all throw it away way too early yeah because because they don't have a pivot and that's we go all the way back to you know chapter one in hj's book is pivot if you don't develop a pivot in golf, the game's going to be very hard because it's, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's the bottom's never going to be in the same place, and it's going to be really hard to hit it solid time and time and time again. But um, everybody has lag at some point in their swing pretty much, but everybody throws it away way too early. And, and that's I'm not saying they're trying to throw it away. I'm saying it, it's getting thrown away because other things aren't happening. Mm-hmm. And, and those are the things that, that I think H.J. was really – really smart at and, and, and really figured out a simple way to put it in an order that people could learn it and they could learn it piece by piece by piece. And, and, um, you know, I've certainly developed, you know, most all the players I've developed over the years by, by teaching, you know, good balance and, 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 you know, a steady post and, and good rotation and some connection to the rotation with the arms and then the delivery of the, of the educated hands by, by being quiet. I remember that one radio segment you did with, with Tom Ness. And he said, you know, you said, we're going to talk 10 minutes about what the hands do in golf <laughs> in the, in the golf swing. And, and, and you said, now go ahead, Tom, 10 minutes about what do the hands do? And he said, nothing. <laughs> you know, they, Hank used to say there are a couple of, a, your hands are two adjustable clamps that have hinges. So they clamp on the club correctly they hinge correctly, and then they just hold the golf club from that point on. They're kind of like the steering wheel of the car. You just hold the steering wheel. You don't make the car go faster with the steering wheel. Mm. I, I'll never forget, and I'm going to turn it over to Jackson as we wrap this up. Uh, there was a student with us at Sandestin, and he was explaining basically what we've been talking about. And the student said, yeah, but doesn't doesn't when I throw it or when I if I – lose the light doesn't it make it go faster when i do that right guy was worried about speed and hank said well yeah but you want the club to go fast but you want it to go fast last Hmm. right that's good that's good isn't it yeah that's great 
And right. most people are trying to make it go fast out of the top of their backswing. Right. Right. You, know, you want it to go want, fast, to, but go fast last. That's right. You want to store that power as long as you can and leave it in there as long as you can. Jackson, wrap this up for us. Give us a good one. Yeah. You know, I think if I didn't get the privilege to meet HJ, but if he was very selective with his words, like Drano was saying, he's very selective with the order of things. And I mm-hmm. think it's really cool to see how he wanted to save lag for, for last. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to get him to learn it, you, you guys have talked briefly about doing it with chipping and pitching and just teaching them how to do it at slow speeds. And I know you love that, D, because of the, the, the process of learning something new. Give it to me, Wayno. Well, you you got a whole lot of you got a whole lot better chance if you can go a little bit slower and learn to achieve some success, and then try to figure out how to to speed up that engine, which is your pivot. Mm-hmm. Um, most people are, most people are trying to speed up the outside instead of learning how to speed up the inside. And you know, if if you can speed up the inside, you know, I try to get people to learn to bump the ground with wedges, and and not dig into the ground, not not throw the club at the ground, but learn to bump the ground with wedges and, and, and then learn to bump the ground a little harder by turning their body a little more, not by throwing their hands and wrists at it a little more. And, and you know, those things are all saying the same thing. We're trying to, we're trying to turn the engine. We're trying to keep the connection and we're trying to store the power in our hands instead of create power with our hands. And, and if you can, if you can store power with your hands instead of try to create it, you can definitely learn to control the club face better and, and learn to deliver the club a lot better to the ball. There's no question about that. Guys, this has been awesome. Uh, thank you guys for taking this walk down uh, instruction memory lane for us all. Um, it's been fun. It was a privilege for all the years that uh, I worked for HJ and for the years that he would come on the radio show on PGA tour radio with me, uh, as we did on the tee with Hank Johnson on the dew sweepers. And hopefully, uh, all of you will enjoy this final segment of the series here on golf swing simplified, uh, talking about educated hands and saving the power for impact. And like I have said before, we're going to have a video up on our YouTube channel, go to dew sweepers TV, and you will find links to some videos that kind of illustrate what we've talked about during the series. But Jackson, Wayne, thanks again for everything. This has been fun. Lots of laughs, but great info. And everybody, I hope you'll enjoy listening to part four of Golf Swing Simplified with Hank Johnson and myself as we have educated hands and saving the power for impact. Welcome back into the Dew Sweepers, everybody. It is a thrill to have back here on the show Mr. Hank Johnson. Hank's our Dew Sweeper Insider, PGA Teacher of the Year, Golf Magazine Top 100 Teacher. Hank, how you doing? I'm doing good, Tony. How about you? Doing fantastic. And, Hank, over the past several weeks, you've taken golfers on a journey to help simplify their thoughts in their golf swing, help them understand how to become a player, a better player, easier, without a whole lot of thoughts, and, uh, I tell you what, I think people are excited about it, and today we're going to conclude that with something that I believe all of the dew sweepers are going to want to hear, which is educated hands or saving the power for impact. It's going to be a good episode. Well, it's pretty important to get all that power that you're generating into the club and then into the ball. So that happens through your hands. So it's an important segment. Well, Hank, you know, in case there were some folks that, that didn't hear the previous segments, if you don't mind, why don't you take us through the first three the first three segments, the first three steps into simplifying a uh, player's golf swing? Well, in the first section, we talked about having a steady post or a steady trunk. Now, if you think of your trunk as a post with your head as, as the top of the post, if your head stays steady, then the circle of your swing stays in the same place and you have a centered arc so that the club passes back through the ball the same way every time and that gives you consistent contact. It shouldn't move from side to side and it shouldn't move up and down. It just stays in place, but it can rotate, which was the second thing we talked about. Your trunk turns back and through, shoulders and hips turn back and through, and that motion really creates the golf swing. Golf swing is a circle. So the laws of a circle say that if you're going to move an object in a circular motion, you have to apply the force at the center of the circle. Well, that would be you. You're standing in the center of the circle that the club is going around. And so the force has to come from the center or from the rotation of your body. 
And Hank, again, uh, one of the one of the imp- interesting things and important things I thought that you said in that was that people will do almost anything to not turn. And and again, the the pivot, the rotary motion is the engine of the golf swing. And, and if you don't have that step, you're you're not going to probably be able to do any of the other stuff. Well, you can't do them effectively and consistently. Uh, and it goes right back to to the thing that I said just just before. The force has to come from the center of the circle, or it's not a circle. Uh, you can think of the wheel on a car. The axle is right in the center of it. If you had another force applied halfway between the axle and the tire, the wheel would come apart. It would disrupt the circle. So that would be like hitting at the ball with your hands or some other part of your body that's not in the center. And then, Hank, we moved into connection last week. If you don't mind, tell us a little bit, revisit connection. Well, so that this rotational motion that you're making with your trunk will move your arms, they have to be connected to your trunk. And that just means that the upper part of your arms stay close together and against the sides of your rib cage, except for maybe just a little bit of up and down movement, they go with your turn. I don't think you swing your arms with your arms. I think your turn swings your arms. So they have to be connected so that when you turn, the arms will move. And Hank, you gave out a great drill to go ahead and help people learn to do this. And you know what? If they'll do this, they're going to they're gonna become a much better pitcher, but they're going to become a better golfer. Well, I do this with a lot of my students uh, in pitching. Just have them fold up a bath towel and pull it, pull, it, pull it across their chest under their arms and just hold the ends of the bath towel against their chest with their upper arms while they make their swing. If the arms move away from the chest, the ends of the towel fall out. So if you can hold that towel and make a turn and hit pitch shots at least, then you've got rotation and you've got a connected swing. And if you don't miss hit the ball very much, you've got a steady head. So you got all three of them in one package. Now, Hank, that brings us to the fourth and final segment in the Golf Simplified, uh, which is saving the power for impact, or we also call it educated hands. Yeah, I mean, people hear the term lag all the time, and that just simply means that you leave the club head back so that it comes through last, so that it it has the maximum acceleration when it gets to the ball. If you swing it with your hands and wrist first, it's already accelerated and it starts to slow down by the time it gets to the ball, and you get no benefit from that speed. So you have to have the confidence to leave the club head back virtually until it swings itself. And this is probably the most difficult thing to do in terms of learning how to play golf. It is really, really hard. But it's important, so it's worth pursuing. Now, if you think of the golf swing, Tony, at the top of the backswing, everybody has lag because the club head is farther back than your hands. And that's mostly because a, a bend has occurred in the back of the right wrist. The right wrist is folded back toward the forearm, kind of in the same position it would be in if you had a waiter's tray sitting on it. There's some wrinkles in the back of your right wrist, so you have lag as long as that wrist has some angle in it. Now, the key is to get all the way through the ball with still some of that angle in the back of your wrist. It's really hard to do because instinctively you want to get that club head going as fast as you can. And when people finally get on to letting the club lag, they actually feel like the club is going slower, but the ball goes farther. And I get some puzzled looks when that happens, but it's just a fact. Absolutely. And Hank, again, this would, you know, to me is one of the hardest things for people to grasp uh, because it doesn't feel like it's going to hit the ball as far. Um, If you don't mind, explain to the dew sweepers. One of the questions that I get is people, when you explain to them leaving the right wrist bent, they want to know where you release the club or they always talk about, well, I'm not releasing the club then. Would you explain that to the folks out there? Well, I, I think you want the club to release itself. Like when you swing a rock around your head at the end of a string, the force of the rock pulls the string straight. You don't have to hold the string straight. It pulls it straight because the rock's trying to get away from you. Now, the club head's trying to get away from you when you turn, and so it straightens everything out and swings itself. So really, in terms of an active release, unless you're hitting some kind of specialty shot, there is no active release with the, with the wrist. Swinging the club head actively from the wrist is one of the major errors in most golf swings that don't work. Now, it's hard not to do. It's real hard not to do because we like to control things with our hands, and all you do with your hands is hold the club. Your hands hold the club. They don't move the club. So you have to let the motion of the swing and the forces that 
are built up during the swing pull everything in line at the right time. And the neat thing is, Tony, those forces will pull it in line the same way every single time. If you're having to cause that to happen, it's much harder to do. Absolutely. And, and Hank, again, uh, you know, one of the harder things to do, but that was a great explanation of release for people because we get that a lot, you know, as an email question as well. As You know, I hear you talk about educated hands. When do you release the club? If you don't mind now, talk about some of the ways you help your students learn to educate their hands, learn to save the power for impact. How do do you help people learn to grasp this and to feel this and be able to do it on their own? Well, I take that same bath towel that we use across the chest, and I drape it over their club head, and I put the club head on the ground about two and a half or three feet before they get to the ball. And then I don't let them do anything except rotate their body, keep their arms against their body, rotate their body, and let that motion drag that towel along the ground and and they can feel the resistance from that towel and their hands will stay in a perfect position every single time when they do that the problem is the club head doesn't create that much resistance so it's harder to do but that's the that's the primary drill i use tony to have people feel the lag i might in a longer swing i might have them go up to the top come back down until their hands are almost to their back foot with a nice wrist angle still there and stop and then go back up to the top again and come back down to that position. And then the third time, I'll let them keep going, and, and they'll have that delivery position built in, and then they can just go ahead and release, if you want to use that term, release their pivot through the ball, which causes everything else to happen. And, Hank, you know, for folks that might struggle chipping the ball, this is another great area for you to, to start with. If you can learn to educate your hands to do the right thing in a small shot, it's, it's going to help you in your full swing. But certainly a lot of folks that really struggle chipping or straightening their right wrist if they're a left-handed player and trying to scoop the ball and throw the club head at the ball. Well, if you don't have lag and a chip, you're probably not going to have it in anything else. So that is the place to start to learn it. Absolutely, and I know that uh, golfers everywhere, they want to hear, they want the secret. And, again, like you said here on this thing, this is kind of the secret of golf. If you can learn to to have educated hands and leave the lag in your golf swing, you've kind of found the secret. Well, I think the secret is that there is no secret. And it's just hard work, some good solid, solid fundamentals, and the ability to make yourself do the right thing until you can do it effectively, I think. Homer Kelly, who wrote The Golf Machine, said, do it right even you, even if you miss the ball until you no longer miss the ball. He was a fanatic about sound fundamentals and the ability to do them even if they didn't produce a good shot the first time out. Hank, that's been some... to stay with it. Absolutely, and most golfers don't like to do it even when they miss the ball, but that's the way you get better. Hell, I don't like to do it, Tony. You you like to do it? No, no. Well, no. <laughs> but I do. I understand. <laughs> I, I do understand. miss it. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, I understand why it's hard. And that's another reason that there's just not very many really good players in the overall scheme of things. No doubt about it. Hank, this has been fun. What a what a great series, some great information for the dew sweepers out there. I think you've helped some people understand the golf swing a little bit better. Well, I hope it'll help some folks, and I hope you get some good feedback from it. All right, Hank, that was great. We'll look forward to catching up with you next week here on the Dew Sweepers.